Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Royal Air Force Milden Hall and to the 100th Security Forces Squadron Memorial Ceremony honoring Staff Sergeant Jeremiah Johnson. I am Chaplain Captain Matthew Brantley, and I will be your narrator for today's ceremony. On behalf of the men and women of the 100th Security Forces Squadron and Team Milden Hall, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today to help us honor Staff Sergeant Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the colors by Team Milden Hall Honor Guard, the playing of the British National Anthem, the singing of the American National Anthem by Senior Airman Sky Dahl Ripple, followed by the invocation. Present the colors. Two, three, four. Four, four. Ready, set. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof to the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does the star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, we come to you this afternoon as we gather to remember and celebrate the life of Staff Sergeant Jeremiah Johnson. In challenging times like these, when we feel such heartache, pain, and loss, we look to you for comfort, encouragement, and hope. Though death is a reality and mourning is natural, 
I pray that the grief would turn our hearts towards you and the life and hope for the future that is found in you. I ask today that you would meet us in this place and lighten the burden of all who are downcast. I pray that in the shadow of this adversity that you would give hope in the place of so many questions that you would bring confidence and in this moment of mourning that you would bring comfort. We look to you today, O oh God, and in the days to come to provide the peace that only you can bring. May our eyes, our hearts, and our spirits be fixed upon you, the source of all comfort, the source of all hope, the source of all life, and the source of all peace. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Kyle Hundley will now provide the Old Testament reading from Psalm 90, verses 1 through 12 and 14, followed by Staff Sergeant Rashonda Walker, who will provide the New Testament reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 48 through 54. The Psalms say, Lord, through all generations, you have been our home. Before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and the world, from beginning to end, you are God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask from the Lord. This only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me upon a high rock. I will call on God and the Lord will rescue me. Morning, noon and night, I cry out in my distress and the Lord hears my voice. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. And wait for the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 48 through 54 say, Earthly people are like the earthly man, and heavenly people are like the heavenly man. Just as we are now like the earthly man, we will someday be like the heavenly man. What I am saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then, when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, the scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Thank you, Chaplain Hundley and Sergeant Walker. At this time, I would like to invite Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Van Leer, the commander of the 100th Security Forces Squadron, to come forward and share remarks. <clears throat> Good afternoon. First and foremost, I want to offer my personal thoughts and prayers to the Johnson family and his loved ones. As a parent myself, the untimely passing of your son is a pain I cannot begin to imagine. To Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, his fiance Ashley, 
on behalf of the men and women of the 100 Security Forces Squadron, I offer my condolences and support to you in this time of need. Family, friends, fellow defenders, I am deeply saddened and grieve in this stunning loss with you. No doubt the past few weeks have been tremendously difficult for all of us here today. It's difficult to find the words to say that will ease the heartache in a time like this. So today, I'd like to focus on the things about Staff Sergeant Johnson that make this so difficult. Staff Sergeant Johnson was an exceptional NCO, thorough and detail-oriented. He loved his airmen, his flight, and being a defender. Never without a smile, his impact to all those he came in contact with, in or out of uniform, will be everlasting. He showed what it meant to be a friend, a defender, and an airman, all of which is seen by the support and love here today. As we learn to navigate without him, whether family, friend, or airman, I believe we can take some measure of comfort in the fact that he will live on through the people whose lives he's touched. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Van Leer, for your remarks. At this time, I'd like to invite Staff Sergeant Eric Ring, Senior Airman Eric B. Wall, and Airman First Class Ashley Danley to come forward and share some remarks and personal thoughts. Good afternoon. I met Jeremiah when he returned from his Zagadez deployment in November of 2016. We quickly became close friends through our shared experiences growing up in the South, and of course, anything dealing with Star Wars. When it came to this, I and many others considered him to be a subject matter expert. Jeremiah was one of those people you could count on for just about anything. From early morning rise to Heathrow, to getting you out of a tight spot and you were caught off guard. In early 2017, I went through a difficult period in my life. I convinced myself I could handle things on my own and I didn't need to talk to anyone. Jeremiah, along with our close friend Sam, set me down and forced me to talk it through. Jeremiah always made it a point that when I was feeling alone or down, that I wasn't alone, that it was okay to ask for help. It, it wasn't just those that were close to him that he did this for. This was his personality. He was always open-minded, accepting, fair, and impartial. He was the type of person that will tell you what you needed to hear, whether or not you liked the answer. In addition to his brutal honesty, he did enjoy being a kid from time to time. We had attended several Comic Cons together, during which we were both dressed in part. This was an obsession for him. Watching him move from vendor to vendor was like watching a kid in a candy store who couldn't decide what he wanted. There were a few times we would have to take an Uber or a taxi back to our hotel just to drop off all the stuff that he bought. Along with enjoying the things he loved, he enjoyed being an uncle and a dad the most. The interactions between his, fiance, his fiancee's daughter, Delilah, and my oldest daughter, Savannah, filled his heart the most. We would often, he would often catch Savannah, as well as myself, off guard with a well-placed dad joke, then turn to me and say, I'm practicing. As much as he enjoyed spoiling himself, he enjoyed making others happy even more. He would go out of his way to do something nice for you, even if it was something small like surprising you with a coffee. He loved many things, but if he had a drink of choice, it would always be coffee. We spent many, many hours talking over many, many more cups, whether it was a quick Starbucks on our way to London or a campfire brew in the highlands of Scotland. There wasn't a drink he preferred more. Preferred more. The last cup we had together was standing in my kitchen, talking about the planning, talking about and planning road trips when we got, once we got back to the States. Those memories and countless others are how I want to remember him. These memories are how we should all remember him. In his passing, he has become more powerful than we could have possibly imagined, one with the force. Rest easy, my friend. You have the high ground. Hello, friends, family, loved ones, fellow defenders. Today, we're all here to remember a fallen defender of ours, Staff Sergeant Jeremiah Johnson. Sergeant Johnson was 
He was a friend of mine, my supervisor, my mentor, and taught me everything I knew here. I've only known him for about three years now, but from the time that I did meet him, it felt like it had been my entire military career. Without him, I don't think I could have been where I am today. From the time that I've known him, I've only learned a couple of things about him, but the first thing I learned was he was driven, motivated. He strived to see something become better than it once was. And an example of that would be Star Wars. One of the things that he and I would always delegate and talk about was how the latest Star Wars movies were just terrible. They could have been better. And there was always something we could nitpick about this or that. And at the end of the day, both of us, well, I settled that. There was nothing we could do, that it just was the way it was, and that was something we had to accept. But he was different. He decided he wanted to do something about it, something that none of us probably would have thought of. Or maybe we would, and we just knew it was a bit too ambitious. He rewrote the next couple of stories, the last couple of movies in his own image, decided that he wanted to make them his way, the way he thought they should have been. This is just an example of one of the things about him that made him as great as he once was as he still is. Another thing I learned about him was that he was always there for us. Through the good times and the bad, he was always there to try and motivate us, give us the information that we needed. Whenever we asked him anything, no matter how difficult it was to find, he would seek it out, he would get the facts. He would ensure that we would have the information that we needed to have. But, brings me great joy that all of us could be here today to be here for him as he was for us. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon. I am Airman First Class Ashley Danley, and I was with Jeremiah's fiance. Um, one quote that has resonated with me in this time is a quote from Lord of the Rings. I've kept the most important ones, parts of it, the ones that really stuck with me. I wish it need not happen in my time, and so do all who live to see such times, though that is not for us to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. Jeremiah is the love of my life, and he's the dad to my daughter. His, father, his, his heart will forever belong to me and mine to him. I remember the first time we met. We connected immediately, and I was down for the count. Our first date led to spending every day we could get together, to living together, and when my daughter came back to live with me, we were, we were complete. One of the things he wanted most in life was to be a dad. I, believe he, I like to believe that he had everything he wanted, and I'm happy I can give him that. I will always cherish and hold our memories together, dear to my heart. I also have a poem from Lord of the Rings. I sit beside the fire and think of all that we have seen, of meadow flowers and butterflies in summers that have been, of yellow leaves and gossamer in autumns that there were, with morning mist and silver sun and wind upon my hair. I sit beside the fire and think of how the world will be when winter comes without a spring that he shall ever see. For still there are so many things that he has never seen. In every wood, in every spring, there is a different green. I sit beside the fire and think of people long ago and, pe and people who will see a world that he shall never know. But all the while I sit and think of times there were before, I listen for returning feet and voices at the door. We cannot shut our emotions, but we can reminisce about how he has affected the lives of other, others, as well as how he will continue to affect the world. There is no death, there is the force. Thank you all sharing those great memories. Senior Airman Dal Ripple will now sing Amazing Grace.
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. When we have lived ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to praise the Lord as when we first begun. Thank you, Senior Airman Dalrymple. To the Johnson family, Ashley, Delilah, friends, honored guests, and the men and women of the 100th Security Forces Squadron, and directly to the Alpha Avengers. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to provide words of spiritual comfort and encouragement as we honor the life of Staff Sergeant Jeremiah Dakota Johnson. Before I go into my message, I have two realizations to share with you all today. The first, is that this is the third time I have stood in front of a large crowd. And this is the first time I have stood in front of a large crowd in this sanctuary since March. So y'all pray for me today, because I feel like a preacher. I'm trying to break the ice. The second thing is that as I serve within the squadrons, I get to know more and more how important they are and what they bring to the fight. And with one entry into RAF Mildenhall, I know how important security forces is when the back gate is closed. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. <laughs> that was the last one I had. <laughs> Terms such as watchman, defender, and force have saturated the hearts, stained the windows, and painted the walls of this dwelling place we call sanctuary. It is in this place we feel safe, weep when we are burdened, and rejoice when we are glad. The sanctuary is a place where we gather together for spiritual edification, the joining of a marital union, and a place to say our final farewell to someone we loved. God, who can also be identified as watchman, defender, and force, has given unto us a sanctuary, a space where individuals can come to laugh, to weep, and to feel safe. My question to us today is what do you offer in the sanctuary of your life that others are drawn to? By the providence and will of Almighty God, Jeremiah, or Staff Sergeant Johnson, 
drew many into his sanctuary. The day his flight was notified of his death, I saw a specific individual in a complete state of shock who thought he had a negative encounter in Jeremiah's sanctuary. But there were others that dwelled in Jeremiah's space who assured this individual that if Staff Sergeant Johnson did not love you, you would not have had that particular encounter in his space. Jeremiah, who was a defender, a watchman, was in his own way a force to be reckoned with. For anyone that came into his space one way, he made sure they did not leave in the same manner. What do I mean? Well, thank you for asking. At the age of four or five, he wandered roughly a thousand yards away in a four-wheel Tonka truck, leading his parents and Mima to a telephone conversation of laughter as he made his way to visit Mima. While serving here at RAF Mildenhall, he would turn any situation into a nerd moment, having off-the-wall conversations about movies and sci-fi. Oh, and not to forget his discussions about cosplay. He always held study sessions and assisted with QCs. Why? Because he cared about airmen. He introduced one to toffee nut Starbucks coffee and another to a Bundy smoothie with granola to provide a bit of a lift me up. He would soon marry the woman of his dreams whom he met one way. Yet after days, yet days after his passing, she is left to reflect on how being in his space, his sanctuary, has assisted her in the changing of her life. He desired to be a father, and like Abraham, he not only became a father to Delilah, but an uncle to Savannah and a watchman to so many others. One does not have to live a long time to impress, impact, inspire, and influence those who enter our sanctuary. But what each of us must consider is simply this. Will those that enter our sanctuary leave differently than the way they may have come? For those who hold close to the Holy Scriptures, we are reminded that naked we came from our mother's womb, and naked shall we return, for it is the Lord that gives and takes away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. My friends, we have a responsibility not to leave this world full but empty. What God has given to each of us is not for ourselves, rather it is meant for us to give to others as he so graciously has given himself for us all. One day, there was a little boy who spent the day playing as a superhero in the backyard of his home. When it was evening, the father called him inside to settle from his watchful day. Surely, my little defender is hungry after looking after others all day. Come on in and have something to eat. The little boy sat down for dinner. He ate, then made his way to the television in the living room. An hour into his show, the little boy fell asleep. And shortly thereafter, the father came over to lift him up from the couch and carry him upstairs to his bedroom. When they got into the room, the father took off his clothes from the day and dressed him in his PJs for the night. Early the next morning, when the son woke up, he realized he had been moved from the living room to the bedroom while also noticing his change of clothes. On Saturday, June 27th, Jeremiah went to sleep. And after years of defending and serving as a watchman, his father went over, picked him up from down here, and carried him upstairs to his new room. 
He took off his clothes of mortality and dressed him in immortality. And although he did not wake up down here, he woke up in heaven from labor to reward. He heard the words of the Father say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Staff Sergeant Johnson, your name has been called and the time has come for you to take your rest. Enjoy heaven because your teammates will now take the watch from here. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite Master Sergeant Jonathan Butler to read the final roll call followed by the playing of taps. As a reminder, our military members are required to stand at attention during the playing of taps. Alpha Flight, prepare for roll. Technical Sergeant Hartline. Present. Senior Airman B. Wall. Present. Senior Airman Ortiz Padilla. Present. Senior Airman Solarzano. Present. Airman First Class Martinez. Present. Airman First Class Marentes. Present. Staff Sergeant Johnson. Staff Sergeant Jeremiah Johnson. Staff Sergeant Jeremiah D. Johnson. End of watch, 27 June, 2020. As you remain standing, please join me in prayer. Precious Lord, as we face the storms of life's sorrows and the reality of death, I pray that we would be encouraged and sustained by you. May all who gathered in this place seek you and call upon you in their time of need. God, I ask that your special blessing and favor be upon the Johnson family. Ashley, Delilah, and the 100th Security Forces Squadron. Bring peace to their hearts as they rely on you and meet the needs of their spirit as only you can. Be with us and go before us as we leave this place. And as we live in faith in you, may we find comfort for today and hope for tomorrow. It is in your great and mighty name that I pray and ask these things. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to thank you for attending today's ceremony. In just a moment, Colonel Van Leer will give his final salute to Staff Sergeant Johnson. Immediately following, all members are welcome to pay their final respects and depart the facility through the sanctuary doors of entry, through the doors of entry, and the sanctuary doors to your right.